Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this video lesson on thesis development. My name is Ms. Jennifer Blank, and I will be your guide on this journey. So first off, what is a thesis? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm also going to tell you what it isn't. It is an argument, which implies that there is actually another opinion about the same topic, okay? If the issue isn't debatable, you cannot have a thesis statement about it, okay? A thesis statement is a claim. You are making an argument. You are stating a position where there could be other positions about the same topic. It is an opinion that is supported by fact. It is not some random opinion that you yank out of your behind. It has to be supported by factual information, all right? It is also an original idea. A thesis is not a main idea. I hate this. I don't know why, but some teachers think it's a good, it's the main idea. No, it isn't. A main idea is a topic, okay? That is not a thesis statement, all right? A main idea is not a thesis. A fact, that's obvious. It is, there's no opinion. There is not, nothing to debate. It is a fact. The American Revolution happened in 1776. That is a fact. It is not a thesis statement. All right. It is not a topic. And it definitely is not. In this essay, I will discuss. I will prove. I will show. I will illustrate. No, no, no. You're telling the audience what you're going to discuss. That's not the same as actually staking, uh, taking a position. Okay. You are taking a position. This is very important to note. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, what are the three parts of a thesis? You'll see this in a number of different ways. Uh, the way I teach it, the way I break it down, is in this fashion. All right, there are three parts to a thesis statement the way I teach it. There's a basic argument, there's a how, and there's a why. All right, the basic argument is the basic premise of what you're trying to prove. The American Revolution was a success, right? Or the American Revolution was a disaster, whatever you want to call it, well, whatever uh, um, point you want to argue. Uh, this is the basic concept that, that you're arguing about. All right. Then there's the how statement, because in history, we're, we care about cause and effect. All right. So you need to be very clear and very specific. So a how, I refer to this as the process or procedure, the set of key steps that allow something to happen. Right. It explains how the basic argument happens. The why looks at motive, intent, or purpose. This explains the reason for something happening, uh, the why people have a belief in a larger idea, or the goal of a historical event or person. It could be any number of things, but it's about motive, intent, and purpose, and how is about process or procedure. So what does this look like? Well, if you have a basic argument that the United States is the best government in the world, obviously we could think of a lot of reasons why that is not the case, right? There are a lot of arguments, well, it's it's not the best. You get, People argue that it's the worst. Just ask Iran. We're the great Satan, you know. But uh, definitely that's a debatable point, right? How is it the best government in the world? Well, through the system of federalism, which was created by the founding fathers of the United States. So how? The process by which the United States government is the best is through federalism, the system of federalism. Why? In order to address the weaknesses of the, the, weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation and enable the new nation to deal with major crises. That's why it was created. Now, you could do a twist on this by saying um, because uh, federalism addresses addressed the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. So you could say why federalism is good, or you could say why the founders created it. So there's a couple of, um, of avenues that you could travel when uh, creating a thesis statement. Now, the complete thesis statement looks like this. The United States is the best government in the world through the system of federalism, which was created by the founding fathers of the United States in order to address the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation and enable the new nation to deal with major crises. Okay, there's an example of a complete thesis statement. Now, clearly, we could break that up into two sentences, but that's up to you. All right, so how do you create a thesis statement? Well, the first step is you have to determine if there's a focus question. In my classes, I give my students a key question that they need to answer, okay? If there's a focus question, you must answer it, okay? Your basic argument is going to be the direct answer to that question. It has to be direct, okay? Don't answer what you wish was there. Don't answer what you think is there. Don't answer something that's sort of related to the question. Directly answer the question, please. How? The steps that made that argument possible, right? And generally, how statements you want to start with through or by, all right? Now, you can use other terms, but I find uh, for students that are just learning to create thesis statements or trying to get the hang of it, that focusing on using those words helps you, uh, it, it helps you along the road. Then why? It's the motive, intent, or purpose that resulted in that argument. <clears throat> 
for why you want to start with an order to or because. All right, those are going to help you develop uh, those components of the thesis. So, what else? You need to understand the question. This is a really basic step, but this is where a lot of people mess up. One of the number one reasons that students fail tests, especially standardized ones, is that they don't really understand what is being asked. And because they don't understand the question, they cannot answer it effectively. And we don't answer it effectively, you get a bad score. So it's really, really important to make sure you understand the question. If your teacher or professor asks a question you're not sure, you need to ask for clarification. Now, during class might not be the best time to ask that, or during the lecture, you might want to go see them during office hours or after school. But in any case, you need to make sure you understand what's being asked. Go where it wants you to go. All right, many questions have implied arguments. Okay, uh, and we're going to see an example of this in a few minutes, but it, don't feel the need to reinvent the wheel and don't feel the need to buck the system. On a standardized test, sadly, your best bet is to go where it wants you to go. If it's implying an argument, like, why was slavery a bad system? Okay, do not try to make the counter argument that slavery was good. Okay, that is not the time to make that argument, all right? Um, now, in my class, I, I appreciate dissent. If students want to make an argument that is against what we've been talking about in class, I'm all for it. You know, let's discuss it and, and let's go through it. But um, in, in a regular environment, you, you need to go where the question wants you to go. Create the basic argument first, all right, because you want to make sure that you directly address that question. So create the basic argument first. And again, you got to make sure it's a direct answer to the question. I, I know I keep saying this, and it might sound like a broken record, but you don't understand. People do not do this. Students do not do this. They do not answer the question. You must, you must answer the question. Okay, please direct answer to the question. Either the how or why can come next. It doesn't really matter the order as long as the components are there, okay? Then you need to make sure that the how and why statements directly relate to and support the basic argument. Don't come up with some random how and why statement that does not directly relate, okay? They need to all fit together. These are pieces of one puzzle, okay? All right. Next, be sure the thesis can be proven within the page requirement. Uh, you don't want to talk about um, the, Roman re uh, the Roman Empire in all its phases in a one-page paper, okay? That's going to be, that's too broad of a topic in a one-page essay. You need to look at your page requirement and make sure that whatever it is you're discussing fits within that requirement, all right? If they, get, if they ask for one page, they don't want 20, okay? They're not going to read it and they're going to fail you, I'm just saying. <laughs> <clears throat> be careful of overly broad statements. Students love this. They love to do this. And it drives people like me absolutely bonkers. Okay, back crazy. All right. So these are not provable. They're not provable in a short paper, but maybe not at all. In many cases, they're not provable, period. The Romans were the greatest civilization in all of recorded history. Listen, I can give you so many examples of why the Romans were not great, and I can also give you examples, as can many people, of civilizations that one could argue were greater that were better than the Roman Empire. So making a statement like that is a surefire way to get a big fat F on that essay, okay? Be careful of statements that are too narrow. If you pick a topic that is so minute, that is so tiny, you're not going to be able to write enough to meet the page requirement. You need to be within it. If you're below it, it's a problem. If you're far above it, it's a problem. All right. So these will limit your paper, these narrow statements, and prevent you from being able to write a complete essay. An example, Roman generals were successful because they killed barbarians. Now, if, if your assignment is about Rome, ancient Rome, for example, you can only talk about Roman generals, and you can only talk about their success, and you can only talk about their success uh, in terms of killing barbarians. You can't talk about military strategy. You can't talk about government. You can't talk about anything else but those things. And if your question is designed um, to... If your question is asking something much broader, then that's not going to get you a good score on the essay, all right? Please keep your personal opinion out of it. In history, we don't care about value judgments. We're not here to determine if something was good or bad or evil. That's not our role. I'm not saying that you shouldn't think that Hitler was evil. He was incredibly evil. But in history, we don't care about that. We care about how and why Hitler was able to do what he did, okay? Uh, deciding that he's evil or not evil is a whole separate issue. To go to a philosopher, go to religious studies, go elsewhere, uh, an ethics class, right, where you talk about that stuff. History is not about value judgments. History is about cause and effect, how and why. So keep your personal bias out of it as much as possible. You want to be objective, okay? You're not going to be neutral because you are staking a claim. You are making an argument. But you want to be objective so that you are more credible and reliable to your audience.
All right, now we're going to practice. Yay! All right, focus question. Now you're going to pause this video, and you're going to make me a thesis statement, all right? The focus question is, how and why is history important? All right, so take a second, pause the video, and make me a thesis. All right. So, possibilities. I came up with this thesis statement. History is important because it helps us solve problems in our current world by looking at the past. That's crap. Okay, that's terrible. That is an absolute piss poor, terrible train wreck of a thesis statement. It is bad. It is vague. It is overly broad. All right? It's bad. This is a bad thesis statement. Now, something that might look a little bit better. History is not only important, it is essential to help citizens understand how the world's problems develop. Examining the causes of those problems can help governments and regular citizens solve or mitigate those problems. Two prime examples of this process are the American and French revolutions. Now, I hope you see the differences, but let's talk about them. Number one, the question, and I'm going to backtrack here in just a second, how and why is history important? The question is implying that history is in fact important. So you may think that history is total crap and total BS. No, 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 no. This is not the time to have that debate. Clearly, your professor or teacher wants you to explain why it is important, and they have implied that it is, in fact, important. So don't uh, cause problems here. The question is directing you a certain, re a certain way. Go there. So this thesis up the ante by saying not only is it important, it is essential. So you've not only gone in the direction the question wants you to go, you've taken it up a notch, which is good. <clears throat> now. It tones in this thesis on the world's problems, right? So it's still too broad. If we left it right there, that would be too broad of a thesis and not provable, all right? But then you get into the how and why. Examining the causes of those problems can help governments and regular citizens solve or mitigate those problems, all right? And now we've given examples. Two prime examples of this process are the American and French revolutions, okay? So... Now your paper is limited to the American and French revolutions, and you have exam specific examples, right? So this directs your paper. It lets the audience know what you're going to talk about, where you're going, without saying, in this paper, I will discuss, which is like the worst possible thing to ever say. Like, don't say that. Teachers hate that. It's awful. It sounds very not academic. Okay, so just don't go there. Something like that. I mean, I know I used mitigate and I used all these other words. You know, you can, you, it doesn't have to be complex. You can use uh, a simple sentence structure, but you want to make your ideas as complex as you can. I hope you learned what you needed to. I hope you have a better understanding of thesis statements, and I will see you in the next video.